it is very similar to Amazon. You look at the multiple in terms of Amazon trading at you know 190 times earnings and Netflix trades at 190 times earnings. As you said, they're willing to kind of spend a lot of money for the future. Uh, what are we looking at for Netflix? $16 billion in, in content costs, and they did $608 million in negative free cash flow in the quarter. So it is very similar. You've got to spend money to get the subscribers to keep them loyal to your name, opposed to going to someone else. But in the expense of doing that, obviously it, it impacts negatively on your cash flow and, and on your overall you know, debt. So that's something uh, that these companies are very similar. Dan, uh, one difference between Amazon and Netflix, yes, the market seems to be granting them a similarly long lease, but Amazon, at least by its numbers, was free cash flow positive going back into the early 2000s, so it kind of made that cross at an earlier stage. What is the, I guess, what are the key landmarks you're looking for for Netflix in terms of making that turn? I, it seems to me you have to sort of estimate, you know, how many subs, what percentage of total global broadband customers are going to be Netflix subscribers in whatever, three, five years. What kind of numbers are you, are you kind of kicking around in that regard? Well, the, the one thing I'm really focusing on is contribution margin. Uh, one of the things that's been really hurting Netflix in regards to obtaining future growth in the international space through new subscribers, which we know they have to do because we know the domestic space is, is so saturated. Um, you know, this quarter they, they lost about roughly about $14 million in terms of for every new subscriber they gained internationally, it negatively impacted their contribution margin. And they have come out and said that at the end of the year, they're expecting a positive contribution margin from the international space. So you're looking for that threshold. You mentioned Amazon getting over on the free cash flow basis. I'm looking for Netflix in regards to when they can start having a positive contribution margin for the expense associated with adding these new international subscribers, which we know is the future for them. Julia, give me yeah, your take I mean, on the Reed Hastings on the Reed Hastings psychology here. I mean, most CEOs don't like bringing up competitors on, on the call, certainly not unprompted. He's talking about YouTube. He's talking about HBO. He's talking about Amazon uh, in, in a very kind of self-effacing way. Uh, why do you think he's doing that? Oh, he loves to talk about competitors. Every time I interview him uh, and ask him about competitors, he always compliments HBO on their content. Um, I think it's really interesting here that what he's trying to do is focus on exclusive content. And this idea that if, if, if Netflix and Amazon and HBO are making exclusive content, he believes there's room for all of them. I mean, he's been very clear. He's not going to try to compete with the streaming VOD services with these skinny bundles of content. But he is increasingly competing with both Amazon and HBO. I mean, he, it, 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 when it comes to this content, he'll play, praise his rivals, but he'll also say that what they're doing is working, it's winning Emmy nominations, and it's also drawing new, um, drawing new viewers and new subscribers. So I think that he sort of sees this as the new content universe. We had a bunch of cable channels. Now we're going to have a bunch of streaming content services, and you might get HBO and Amazon Prime and also Netflix. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.